But if He's truly God, who He says He is, then we need to adhere yes. and listen yes. and heed that which He has said. What's the alternative? We get a great boat ride. We get a little seasick. Things in our life just uh, doesn't seem to be quite right. You ever notice sometimes we say, well, what's, what's going on in my life? What's, what's wrong? Yes. Maybe it's because we're not listening to God. See, whenever God is speaking to us and we're not listening, we shouldn't even ask the question, what's going on? We should know. But instead we're asleep and, and we're, we're blind to really what's going on. The world is raging around us and the world is literally falling apart yes. and we're asleep in the boat. Come on. Come on, Pastor. God's people who know God, believe God, are asleep in the boat. And why is the world turned upside down? Mostly because the Christians, God's people, have not humbled themselves yes. and called upon God Himself. If we want to blame anybody, we need to blame us. Yes. I think God's trying to get our attention. Amen. Yes. See, the amazing thing to me, you would think that Jonah would immediately start calling upon the Lord, but we don't see in one place why he's on the boat that he calls upon God. The heathen tell him to call upon God, and yet even though the storm is raging, he still refuses to call upon the Lord. Did you notice that? And it's amazing to me that God takes us through so many things in our life. He turns our life upside down and He's shaking it in our life. And we even call it a storm in our life. And yet, we still don't call upon the Lord. Uh, come on, Pastor. Yeah, I think I'll go down with it. Just need to go shop. Just shop it off. When all the while God is just simply wanting talk to us, to get through to us, and to speak to our hearts. See, we shouldn't be like the world that doesn't hear what God is speaking to us. It's almost understandable that the world isn't hearing God. But we should hear God. Amen? Yes. God is calling us to wake up. Amen? Yes. God is calling us not to sleep in the midst of the boat, but to wake up in the midst of the storm. See, we should be like those that are asleep while the world is in a storm. We should have a compassionate heart for those that are in the storm. Amen. Amen. Romans 13, 11. And do this knowing that the time that now is high time to wake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The time is at hand, amen? The time is nearer now than we ever used to be. Verse 12, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in reverie and drunkenness, not in lewdness and in lust, not in strife and envy. We put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. See, even the sailors knew that they should have been calling upon God. Even the sailors in the midst of that begin to call upon the Lord after they threw Jonah in there. And Jonah still wasn't calling upon God. In fact, it says after three days in the belly, Jonah began to call upon the Lord. How about you, but I think I would have started calling upon the Lord a little bit sooner. See, a lot of us will say that's what we would do, and even whenever we look at 
Israel and, and how God opened up the Red Sea and, and, and we marvel at just how they just turned quickly and, and didn't believe the Lord. Yet really, in our life, we can be the same one. God has done so many miracles. God has changed us in so many different ways. And yet, isn't it amazing how quickly we can forget God? God wants us to call upon Him. Awake, arise, and call upon your God. How long does the Lord need to tell you to seek His face, to call upon Him, to go to prayer? Just like a few weeks ago, whenever I was preaching that God was looking for me, He's looking for men and women that will call upon Him. Amen? That will turn back judgment, that will stand in the gap, that will pray for rain, in this famine. God is looking for individuals that He can use. Amen? Yes. God wants us to talk to you. One thing that we see within these verses is that they begin to turn to Him and say, Who are you? What occupation do you have? What people are you of? And in the same way, the world is asking who we are. What do we really stand for? What do we really live for in our life? Second Corinthians 5 says this. For the love of, the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all die. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. We should be of those that live not for ourselves, but for him who died for us. Amen? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Anybody have some old things become new? Now all, all things are of God who has reconciled us to Himself through Jesus Christ, has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to Himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. And so we see that one of the answers to who we are is we're ambassadors. Amen? Yes. Another place in Corinthians it says, And do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, whom is in you, whom you have from God? And you are not your own, but you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit which are God. That's who we are. Amen. We belong to God. We are ambassadors of Christ. Yes. We need to represent Him. Amen. Yes. Jesus said that we are salt and light to this world. What does light do? Talk about the light. It expels the dark. Have you ever seen darkness overcome light? No. Turn on some darkness. You turn on the light. And darkness is expelled. Question, are we influencing those that are around us more than they're influencing us? Come on. Come on, Pastor. Is the darkness overcoming us or are we overcoming the darkness? See, we are to be the light in this world, amen? And wherever we're at, we need to shine the light of God's Word and turn on the light. Yes. We, do, we are to expel the darkness. Now, sometimes light isn't real comfortable, especially when you're trying to sleep. 
But we need the noonday sun shining in our face. Yes, amen. So that we can wake up and not sleep and slumber as we've done. We need the light exposing all of the crevices in our life, even if they're uncomfortable, because we know it will bring life in us. See, that's, that's the good thing about God being able to expose those things in our life is that He does those things in such a way where we have a revelation of His love for us and we can trust Him with our heart. Amen? You know, people that are around us that, that we don't always trust, we don't always necessarily trust our guts with. The personal things in our life. They're going to use that against you. Anybody know what I'm saying? But God we can trust with our whole life. Our whole heart. Because He knows it anyways. So just let Him expose all of those things in our hearts. And let Him deal with those things in our hearts. And let Him heal and change those things. They're not always comfortable. Because then we have to come face to face with who we are. It's easier to blame it on somebody else. Well, it's because they made me angry. But the question is, are we influencing those that are around us? By the light that we show in our life? See, it's not just what we say, but how are we living? See, any of us can say a bunch of things, but we need to live that which... We're reading in these, these pages. Amen? We don't just say it. God wants us to influence those that are around us. That's what light does. is It exposes and it shines. And it brings understanding in a world that's lost. You know, people that don't know what to do in their life, we need to shed some light on that subject so that they know what to do. Amen? So what does salt do? It preserves. It preserves, really, this world. In one sense, from judgment through our prayers and who we are. Remember that God wanted to get Lot and his family out before he brought wrath upon that city. Salt preserves. Salt brings taste to an otherwise tasteless world. But also salt can irritate. It can heal a, a, a cut. Anybody ever have a cut on their finger and eat some potato chips? It's not real fun. It, it stings, it burns, it's that salt that's getting in the wounds. So sometimes a Christian can irritate other people because it's kind of salt in the wound. It's, it's pointing out something that maybe they're not wanting to see. But salt, for it to do any good, it's got to be able to sacrifice itself. It's got to dissolve. Before you can taste salt, it's dissolving in your mouth. And I believe more than anything else that God wants us to grab the, the picture of really what salt is, that we're, we need to be willing to give up our life for other people. Amen? For he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. That is our goal. That is our mission. Amen. Amen. To give up our life for someone else. To pray for somebody else. To have enough compassion for our neighbor across the way or, or that person that we work with at work and pray for them for the situation that's in their life to sacrifice our time, our life, so that God can move on their behalf. See, we need men and women in this church to have the attitude that it's not just about what I can get from God on any given 